But it is interview time. I have with me my very special guest. Would you like to reveal yourself to everyone out there? Hey, what's up? It's Chris Burnett. Chris Burnett. What an awesome guy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, we we try to make our guests feel welcome when we have them on here, so... I do. I feel very welcome. I feel like I'm at home on the couch just um, sipping wine here chatting with you. Well, that's you've, done, you've done a lovely job. I know. I'm I'm just sitting here on my bed. I don't have any wine, <laughs> but that's that, that is a good plan for later. I, I might take you up on that. There you go. But uh, since you are, in fact, a voice actor, you, you act with the voices, uh, could you tell us how yes. you got started in that whole thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, basically, I, I, you know, I wanted to be an actor for a long time since I was a kid, and, um, in high school, got into, you know, theater and all that, and then, um, in college, I kind of had a panic attack and was like, I don't know if this is what I want to do with my life, and I kind of took a break from it, but as soon as I graduated, I decided I wanted to give it a go, and I did some, uh, film and commercial work for like five or six years and a lot of that led to um like uh radio ads and stuff like that so i started doing some voice radio ads for commercials that were on camera and i really liked it and um and then i my agent in dallas started sending me to funimation and that's how i got in touch with them so it's been kind of a weird ride but yeah that's how i ended up in voice that's really cool, and since you, you know, got hooked up with Funimation, you've had the chance to do some pretty cool roles like Romeo. Yes, that was um, that was a really, really fun role, and um, it kind of like, it's just been, it's been a wild ride since then, but yeah, it was a really cool role, and I got, I got really lucky to do it. Um, it was, uh, I don't know, it was, it was fun, it was like, it was a perfect blend of, um, Shakespeare and modernism. It was was the perfect blend for me because if it was all Shakespeare, I don't know if I could have done it. Yeah, whenever anybody asks me about Romeo x Juliet, I always say, well, take what you know about Romeo and Juliet. And Mm -hmm. uh, Juliet is the mask of Zorro, and Romeo has a flying pegasus for some reason. (laughs) There you go. It's like uh, just a nice little twist on on an old tale there. Yeah, and it, it's got that wonderful caricature of William Shakespeare thrown in there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. By by J. Michael Tatum too. There. J. Michael Tatum. He he's a nice guy. We should we should talk to him again sometime soon. Yes, he's the man. We should we should talk to everyone again soon. Let's get everyone back. We'll we'll have a big Funimation party. There you go. Everyone all at one time. I'm sure that will just uh, crowd your airwaves there. And that's another thing, too. Since you've sort of gotten into this whole thing at Funimation, you guys do your stuff one at a time. Yeah, we do it one at a time, and that's kind of like, you know, it makes it really interesting. In fact, I, uh, Brina, who played Juliet, like, I didn't meet her for, I mean, months, it felt like. And um, it was crazy because uh, I almost didn't want to meet her, like, midway through it because I had just pictured her almost as, like, this cartoon at that point. So it's kind of a weird deal. And sometimes you get lucky, and they've already recorded the other person's part, and so you can kind of play off of them. And then other times, you know, you draw the short end of the stick or, or the short end of the straw or whatever, and you end up having to do it first, which is a little a little more difficult, you know. Yeah, and not only did you, you know, co-star with Brynn and that, but you guys also do something else that's pretty cool together. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, we, we co-host GameStop TV, which um, it can be seen in all your local GameStop stores. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's been it's been really cool. We're kind of like forever intertwined in anime world, and now it's like blending over into uh, the GameStop stuff. So it's been really fun. It's been really great. Yeah, I always thought that that was kind of cool. You know, sometimes I would walk into my GameStop and see the TV, and I would see people and like, oh yeah, those people are pretty cool. Later, after I got into <laughs> anime, I find out, oh, those are voice actors who I've been, you know, hearing for all these years, and they've been right there on GameStop TV. Yeah, there, there it is. I sometimes I feel bad for the GameStop employees because they have to listen to us for like eight or nine hours. They probably are not too fond of our voices, but it's a, it's a really fun job and it's been awesome having uh her on set there too yeah plus you guys get to know about all the awesome new games coming out before most other people 
That's right. That's right. The the inside knowledge there, I guess. And uh, what would you say is one of your favorite things about you know doing voice acting? Well, I mean, for me, it's. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. There, are, there are parts of it that are great, and then there are parts of it that, that are bad. The bad, the bad is simply that you don't always have like steady work, you know. But the thing that's been great for me is just uh, when I was doing film commercial, uh, strictly film and commercial acting. I was driving around a lot um, to Austin, to Shreveport, to New Orleans, and sometimes in one day, you know. And I, I feel like voice acting has enabled me to be more. Uh, more places at one time without having to go anywhere, you know? Because with, I guess with the technology now, I could I could theoretically do a, a commercial or a job in, you know, a different country, and I wouldn't have to leave Dallas necessarily or, or my house for that matter, you know? So that, that's one of the things I really like about it. It's just enabled me to kind of grow some roots somewhere. But uh, but it's also just fun to, you know, you you're... you're there's times when you're in the booth and you're more, um, uh, I guess you're kind of more out there, you know, because there's nobody really watching you, you know? Yeah, so it's just you, you and the director and whatever your role is. Right, right. You're a little more free to kind of go a little crazy. Yeah. And is there a certain role or just a series in general that you've really enjoyed other than Romeo? Um... Well, there's one. There's one that hasn't been released yet that I'm really excited to see. Um, another one I really enjoyed. I loved. Uh, there was one guy I played. He was. I'm trying to remember the exact name of him. It's Ko, Koichi. Koichi has all. That's that was it from Nabari, and I really liked that role. I think the guy kind of looked like me a little bit, and he was kind of a. I got to talk a little faster because sometimes I, I have to really slow myself down at Funimation and not talk so fast so I can kind of match the flaps, you know? And this guy, I felt like I kind of just got to let loose and fly a little bit, so it was really fun. And then there was a lot of fight scenes, stuff like that, you know? And has that been an issue with you as sort of a, a newer actor as opposed to, like, the seasoned veterans matching the lip flaps and all that? You know, for a while, at the beginning, it was, like, it was difficult, like, more difficult, but I think now I kind of have slowed into a pace. It's... It's not as hard as it used to be. I think, and you kind of get in the groove, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And if you take too long of a break, then you kind of find that groove again and, you know, kind of ebbs and flows. But Yeah, you sort of got to get into the character and get into the flow of how everything works. Yeah, yeah. But I think with that, we're going to take a short commercial break. But don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we'll still be here with our special guest. So make sure that you keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want, and nothing you don't. Do you know what's on 918 The Fan? A bunch of our crap. Good heavens. You know what's not on 918 The Fan? A bunch of your crap. Boulder dash, I say. Want your crap on 918 The Fan? Quite so, good fellow. Then send your crap titled Fan Friday Submissions to kibs at 918thefan.com and we might just post it up for all the world to see. What do you have to lose? Nothing. Nothing, I say. Quite so. Quite right. Yes, jolly good. Cheerio. Pip, pip, I say. Ah, yes, good sir. Hey, everybody out there. Welcome back to 91.8 The Fan. I am still here, and I still have with me my very special guest. At least I hope so. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> yes, he's still here. So he's here, and I'm here, and we're going to talk about some of your more recent stuff or anything that's really memorable that you want to definitely pump out there and make sure people go and see. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, most of my stuff out right now, I don't know if you'll be able to see me. You can hear me at a few places, though, if you listen closely. <laughs> um, I think uh, I, they just released some. Uh, I, I, they just released some spots for the Eye Care Centers of America, and I'm doing their. Um, uh, it's a campaign, and I'm, I'm a voices animated pair of glasses called Eye Guy. Anyways, oh, cool. Um, if you're watching TV and you catch a commercial or two with, with that, that's uh, that. I'm, I'm voicing that now, so. That's the latest thing I've been working on. That's always fun. Commercials are a nice little change of pace. Yeah, yeah, and it's really fun too. You know, they kind of they had to fill my mouth and kind of match it up with the the glasses of the character and everything. It's been a real cool uh, campaign. Yeah, sort of a, a different feel from just going into a booth and matching lip flaps. All right, exactly. There you go. 
it's a little more free. <clears throat> and uh, in terms of anime, uh, I know neither you or I have seen it yet, but we have a few fans of Bakken Test out there, and you do play Rio in that. Yes, and I was just uh, telling Chris off air, I, have, I haven't had the chance to finish it yet. I started streaming it the other day. But yeah, it was a fun show to work on. Yeah, it's it's. I remember hearing the synopsis for it, and I'm like, this is this is silly. It's got a silly name, and but I watched the first episode, and it looks interesting. I need to I need to get on it along with all the other stuff that I'm watching. Well, you and me both, my friend. Yeah, we'll we'll go we'll go have a a streaming party. We'll both watch it together. There you go. We'll gather all the Funimation people together, sit on a couch, stream it with some popcorn. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. We'll go out and do that. And uh, other than that, uh, you don't have too much that you can talk about because of those blasted NDAs, but hopefully we will be able to hear you in the very near future. Yes, yes, I hope so. I just finished a couple of shows um, a month or two ago, and um, I'm not exactly sure when they're going to come out, so I, you know, I don't really want to say too much and uh, get everyone in trouble here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we'll definitely look, look forward to those. It's It's not that yeah. hard to take the extra 30 seconds to look at the credits and go, oh, look, he was in this. Awesome. There you go. There you go. Maybe we'll come back on and talk about them uh, once they come out. Yeah, we can definitely do that. But yeah. other than that, do you, uh, do you hit up any conventions at all? You know, I haven't uh, been asked to a convention yet. I've been uh, dying to go. And the last time there was one in Dallas, I was out of town. But uh, I haven't been yet. And um, I would love to go. So if anybody would like to meet me or see me at one, please... Uh, Look me up on my website and uh, send the info. Love to come. Yeah, we we find that uh, with a lot of conventions, more often than not, sometimes you have to invite yourselves. Like, oh, you're having a convention. I sure would <laughs> like to come. <laughs> like invite myself to to the party type of thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But speaking of your website, uh, you have that, and do you have any other places where the fans out there can stock your work? Yes, hopefully, um, I hopefully have worked this all to where it synchronizes through my website. So you can go to uh, www.chrisburnettvoiceactor.com, and um, there at the bottom of the page, there's like a link to my Twitter and my Facebook. So, and uh, and then you can follow me uh, all over the viral world if you like. All over the viral world, and there we will go. definitely be posting those on the uh the posts that we have on our website so anybody cool. who misses this who why would you miss this why why would you do that exactly why why would you do that what what a jerk L- listen to all those jerks out there i i can hear them not listening no 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 but no no Th- they'll get the chance they'll have their chance and before we let you go we do have one final thing to ask of you sure sure He's he, all right. We got the first part done. He knows that we want to ask him something. <laughs> now, part two. We ask everyone who comes on the show if they would be willing to participate in the ninety-one point eight the fan tradition. Okay. Okay, that's part two. Now for part three. We just asked everybody who comes on the show if they would be willing to do a radio bump for us. Okay. Uh, tell me more about. <laughs> tell me more about this. It, it's very Sounds simple. It's just a line which you're you're used to doing yeah. in your your line of work, but we just ask everybody to say hello. My name is. You insert your name. I do right. this. You can be as specific or broad as you like. Uh, you can name certain characters. You can just say that you're a voice actor. Whatever you want, it's completely up to you. And you're okay. tuned into ninety one point eight The Fan. Okay. And the only other catch is that we do it live on air for any bloopers. Oh no! Oh yes! <laughs> so much, uh, so much pressure. All right. I know. It's just, it's just you and me and the thousands of fans out there. No pressure. Okay. All right. But when hey, you're all everybody. ready. Oh. oh, right, right, right. And I guess you're ready, so one. we can go for, <laughs> we can go for a take one. You're a step ahead of me. Yes. All right. Hey everybody, this is Chris Burnett. I voice Romeo and Romeo and Juliet, and you are listening to 98.1 The Fan. Boom! Uh, very close, but it's 91.8 The Fan. Oh no! Oh, it's it's not th- nothing to worry about. The numbers are the easiest blooper to make. It happens all the time. See, I was so busy trying to remember my name that I reversed the, uh, the radio wire. Uh... Do I just roll again, then? Go for it. 
Hey everybody, this is Chris Burnett, take two. Uh, I voice Romeo and Romeo and Juliet, and you are listening to 91.8 The Fan. What there the? you go. All right. So, that is that, and this is this, and for anyone out there, as we said, who missed any part of this interview, you, you're a jerk, but you can be less of a jerk when you check it out when it's up on our website in the next few days, so make sure to keep it tuned to your favorite station, 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.